Hey, what's up, everybody? Joshua Cast. We're back at you with Loop Masters, and welcome to the very first video in production basics, tips and tricks for beginners inside of Ableton Live. Today, I'm going to show you how to save CPU. This is a common problem if you don't have a great computer or if you just have massive projects. Processing power becomes like gold, so it's very important to save where you can. I've got this project I'm working on, and by the way, all the sounds inside of here, including the MIDI I used for the synth line, is from Single Maker's Tropical Hits Sessions. It's one of my favorite packs of theirs to date. I'll leave a link to it in the video description if you want to check it out. So this is the track I'm working on. And you might notice over here the CPU meter is going above 50. It's about 60%. So let's go between 50 and 64%. And I only have four tracks. And the bulk of it's coming from Serum. And and not only that, but before I jump into the main CPU saver I'm about to show you, if you check out my reverb, I'm using Ableton Live's reverb, you'll see that there's a global quality and it's on high right now. Uh, this is quite a drain on CPU as well. If I go ahead and put it on eco, let's see how high we're hitting on the CPU now. You'll see that just changing the global quality of the reverb has already reduced our CPU usage. You want to turn that back on high when you're going to do your final render of your project, but while you're working, Eco is perfectly fine. There's no reason to have it on high while you're working inside your project. However, the bulk of the CPU is being used by Serum right here because I've got a really complex patch and it's just eating so much CPU that we need to do something about it. And just one other tip before we jump into there, the Spectrum analyzer down here that you see behind the EQ actually takes up CPU as well. And to turn that off, you just got to click this right here. So if you look right here, let's check out the CPU meter again. So we're kissing 60, 61, but if I turn this off, let's see what happens. So now we're kissing 57, 58. So Reducing the global quality here on the reverb and turning off that spectrum analyzer behind the EQ has already reduced our CPU. But the bulk of it's gonna happen when I right click and freeze this track. Now what this does is renders whatever channel you're freezing to audio. It's gonna save my patch, it's gonna save my EQ, it's gonna save my reverb, but it's essentially gonna hard bake everything into an audio file. It's gonna turn blue and this section right here with the dotted lines is the actual reverb tail. So you can see it happening, you can actually hear it happening. But now watch what happens when I play these four tracks. Let's look at the CPU meter again. We're at 6%. Now what's really cool about freeze, the original file is still there. If I wanna come over here and unfreeze and make any changes to my EQ or my reverb or the patch, I can still do that. I just gotta come back in and refreeze when I'm done. You'll see how quick it was right there and that's because I didn't make any changes. However, if I did, it would have to re-render that audio. And another really cool thing too about a frozen track, if I add a track by Control T and press Control on Windows and click and drag, you'll see that I have my audio file now. So that's there for me if I wanna use that. But again, my frozen track is there if I need it. I can turn it off if I don't wanna double up on it and we should be good to go. So uh, the only thing that you really need to keep an eye on when you're doing this freezing thing to save on CPU is all of those frozen tracks are getting put into your project file. So if you come over here to current project, samples, processed, freeze, there's that frozen track. If I unfreeze, make a change, refreeze, it's gonna to have to refreeze, like I said before, we've made a change, so it has to create a completely new audio file. Look what's happened here. We've actually created a second wave file, and these wave files are 32 bits, so they're huge. If I right click and show an explorer, click on it, that's nine megabytes for each one of those, 9.2. That's pretty, that's gonna add up pretty quick. This is just an eight bar loop. Imagine if you freeze your whole track, that's like a six minute track. Those files add up fast. So that's just something else to keep in mind when you're using this option to save on CPU. Anyway, I hope you learned something. We're gonna be doing more of these tips coming up. If you have any questions about how something's done inside of Ableton Live or any of your favorite synthesizers, just let me know and I'll try to make a video for you.